Good morning, Tacoma New Life Church. Merry Christmas to all of you. Uh, what a time to be alive, right? Yeah, 2020 has been everything but normal. Right? It has been chaotic. It has been weird, right? We are in the middle of a pandemic with so many uncertainties. We're having to spend um, time with our families, utilizing technology as uh, we watch each other open presents, you know, via FaceTime or Zoom. We're having to witness uh, pinnacle events in the lives of people around us through a computer screen. And at some point today or this week when New Year's Eve hits, we will raise our glasses as we make a toast and as we hold a phone in the other hand to capture these moments. You know, 2020 has been everything but normal. And this morning, as we celebrate as we celebrate Christmas, Christmas, not a happy holidays, but as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, it is the one thing about 2020 that remains consistent, true, and the most normal thing of our lives. You see, it reminds us that in the midst of a pandemic, Jesus is still king. It reminds us that in the midst of uncertainty and even hopelessness, that in Jesus Christ, we have not only hope, but we have a living hope. It reminds us that God's promises are true, that God fulfills and accomplishes what he says and sets out to do. It reminds us of just how faithful God truly is. And Christmas is still Christmas because of who it celebrates. And there is nothing that the world can throw at us that will ever take that away. And I can just hear you all saying amen to that. You know, this morning, uh, we're going to keep it short and sweet, all right? Uh, but this morning, we are on day 25 of our Bible reading plan, a walk through Proverbs. And this morning, you and I, we are tasked with reading chapter 25 of Proverbs. But with our time this morning, I just wanted to share two verses with you, verses 21 and 22. And I, I hope and I pray that you would... Uh, Sit on this verse uh, throughout the day that you would wrestle with it and you would find not only the application, but you would allow room for God and uh, the grace of His Holy Spirit to bring about conviction in your life today. Would you give ear to what it says uh, this morning? If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will keep burning coals on his head and the Lord will reward you. Amen. You know, the Christmas season tends to be the season where we ease up our clenched fists and simmer down on our boiled anger and frustration, and we exchange it for generosity, compassion. Right? We're a little more mindful, a little more cheerful. Unless your name is Ebenezer Scrooge, then it just has a tendency to magnify. But you know, there is something about the Christmas season that sparks joy in our hearts and, and reasons with us to, I don't know, for the lack of a better word, to be a, a little nicer, to be a little more considerate, to be, I don't know, a, a little more heartfelt. Right? There's something about the Christmas season that kind of gets leaves us in our in our feelings, right? And this morning in our proverb, it says, If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. You know, if we are honest with ourselves, and if we're honest and transparent with our sinful nature, right? If we're honest about our fallenness, then, you know, if we were to see our, if we were to ever see our enemy hungry or thirsty, it would be kind of gratifying to see them remain hungry, right? There's something about them being in that situation, you having the power, possessing the power to do something in their life that is nice, but you're like, 
no thanks, I would rather not, right? There's something about that in our sinfulness that makes that gratifying. We would probably go we would probably go as far as saying, you know, like, well that's what they get. Right? Or we would say something along the lines of, you know, you should have thought about that before you acted like a jerk. Or you should have thought about that before you were so dishonest and cruel. Then you wouldn't be in this position. Then you wouldn't be in this predicament. Then you wouldn't be hungry and in need of my services. You see, it's your fault that you're in this place. And in our sinfulness, right, in our brokenness, that's how we would justify it. But our proverb this morning tells us to help even our enemies in their time of need. And when someone is truly your enemy, I have to be honest with you, that's a tough, tough ask. Like, it's a hard thing to do. And it feels like the Bible is asking us to do something that feels something nearly impossible to do. But despite it being a tough ask, we should still attempt, muster up the courage, muster up the strength to do it, right? Especially if we consider ourselves to be saved and redeemed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in my uh, humble opinion, that should always be our number one motive in doing so because we were enemies to God, yet He friended us. But beyond that, we should challenge ourselves to do so because in verse 22 it says that when we do so, meaning that if we are to ever see our enemy in need, and we help them, we aid them, we, I don't know, come to the rescue. It says when we respond in that way, it'll be like heaping burning coals on their head, not ours, on their head. And that's not an imagery of like we're just causing them uh, pain or just inflicting on them like this shame. That's not what it's saying. Essentially what that means is that you will win them over. You will win them over with your kindness. You will win them over with your compassion. You will win them over with your generosity. And as a result, those heaping coals, right, it'll lead them into repentance because he or she will feel the burning pangs of guilt for his or her wrongdoing. In other words, what Proverbs is saying this morning, what the Holy Scriptures are saying this morning is, you will kill them with your kindness. And that's in a pause, like not physically kill them, right? But you will win them over with your kindness. Meaning that you will change them, not by uh, meeting them, right? With the same things that they have wronged you with. Instead, you will win them over with your generosity and your compassion. Because if we have learned anything in life, two wrongs don't make things right. The law of Hammurabi doesn't work, right? Because an eye for an eye would leave the world blind, right? But essentially, ultimately, what we learn from our proverb this morning is this. Is that you and I have the power. You and I have the strength. You and I have the tools necessary to win people over the right way. Not inflicting more pain upon them or making their situation worse. We have the opportunity, we have the olive branch to reach out, to lend them aid and say, even though you are my enemy, I don't want to see you starve. Even though you are my enemy, I don't want to see you thirsty. Why? Because you and I, we have the love of Christ dwelling in us. And that allows us to be the better person or the bigger person. If that makes sense. With that said, church, I, I, I pray that you would have a wonderful day today. May you be reminded of God's promises. Would you be reminded of just how faithful God is? And as we celebrate His birth, would that renew our hope? Would that allow us to look to the future in anticipation, knowing that God sent His Son the first time? And He tells us that He will send Him a second time and we eagerly await his second coming until then 
Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Enjoy your time with your families today. May you go in peace. Amen.